Hello everybody and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. Today I'm going to be creating a simple coin pickup script uh, where it's going to play some sound and change uh, sort of a, a text counter on the screen. Uh, so for this tutorial um, I've set up a resources folder with uh, a sounds folder, coin pickup, I've got two coin pickup sounds here, with some background music as well. Uh, and the other thing I've imported is the standard assets uh, package from Unity. Uh, you can get that on the asset store. Uh, I think it's standard assets. It says 2017, but it's still compatible with current ones. When you do import, uh, I didn't import the actual scenes folder. I just imported the actual main standard assets part. Um, if you import it into 2019.4, uh, there is one error that remains, which is referencing uh, GUI text. If you delete the script that it references, um, then everything should be fine and it should compile and run and everything. So uh, if you create a 3D object, uh, create a plane, this is going to be the floor for our player. Uh, I'm going to set this to about 5x5. Five five. Um, so we've got a simple floor here. Then we're going to import the rigid body uh, FPS controller. We drag that roughly to the center of our scene, uh, place it about here. Yeah, that should be about right. Uh, hopefully it's above the floor. Um, you can find out. Yep, it's above our floor and wandering about. Nice. Um, if you want to actually see the outline to make sure, there we go. We can enable the collider uh, so we can see it. There we go. About there. Perfect. Oh, uh, sure. We can save our script, uh, uh, scene rather, as coin scene for now, just to make sure that uh, if anything, if Unity crashes at any point, you've got a, a saved version of at least this part. Uh, just hitting Control S every now and then is a good way just to make sure that uh, your scene is saving. Um, okay, so now we've got a player that can walk around on the scene. Let's create a coin. So create a cylinder object. Uh, it might be in the floor, so just drag it up. Uh, we'll set the y-axis to 0 0.05, yeah, that should be fine. Um, actually, let's create these to be about point, point 0.8, maybe. There we go. Make the, the coin fairly small. Uh, put 90 degrees on the z-axis. Just drag it down to the floor a little bit more. Awesome. So what we want to do now is create a material for this coin, because right now it's looking a bit grey. Uh, so we call this uh, coin. Um, set it to yellow, and add some emission here, use the eyedropper, oh no, not to make it white, make it yellow, drag it on the coin, there we go, a nice bright coin in our scene. If we drag it a bit close to the player, that should be good, drag it off the floor a little bit, and if we go into our game view, there we are, we have a little coin in our scene, uh, perfect. Uh, so what we can do now is start creating the actual script. So we're going to create one called coin script. We do create an add, just by pressing enter there. Uh, so it should now create the script and add it to the coin. Now the other thing we're going to do is add an audio source. Actually, no, we're not. Um, <laughs> we're going to do that. We're going to uh, create another object though. We're going to create a uh, sorry a UI and then text. So this will create a canvas with some text on it. Um, so you want your text to sort of be positioned, I'm going to have it sort of positioned top left for now. I'm in free aspect, um, I have created, oh, we've got a 16 by 9 one here, so if we actually drag that in, uh, we can set that there, I'm just going to set this to coins, zero, it's going to scale this up a little bit, uh, make the font size a bit bigger, there we go, set the colour to maybe red, have it maybe bold, Maybe it's bold and italic if you wanted. Um, I'm going to go bold. Have we got any other fonts we can have a look at? There we go. We've got, we've got Open Sans. Uh, yeah, actually, I like the Open Sans one. That's pretty cool. Uh, oh, actually, one thing we want is a little space here. Just to space that out. And maybe we can drag this a bit longer just in case we have sort of more than a couple digits worth of coins. So if we go back to our cylinder now, we can rename this to coin. Go to our resources folder and drag the coin from the hierarchy into the resources folder. And we should now have a coin that we can just drag into the scene uh, anywhere we want. Uh, although these ones will be touching the floor, so you may want to drag these up a little bit. If we actually go to our scene, 
we should see a whole bunch of coins everywhere uh, at the moment we're just bumping into. So to fix that, because obviously with a coin you want to be able to walk through it, uh, just simply click on the coin in the resources folder uh, and make sure it's set to a trigger. If we hit play again now, you should be able to walk through all of them because they're all versions of the prefab. Uh, so they all sort of talk to each other and they do the same thing. So uh, let's now edit the script. So open it up in your text editor of choice. Um, this is going to be very simple. We're just going to quite simply add a void on trigger enter. Uh, and then on here, we're just going to quite simply just destroy the object when we walk into it. Um, this is just the, the start of what we're going to do. Um, so if you save your script, go back in. Uh, oh, we destroyed that one already because we landed in it. Uh, and there we go. Every time we walk into a coin, they disappear. We have no way of knowing though. Well, um, how many coins we've uh, destroyed uh, or at the moment it doesn't make any sound either. So um, on our canvas we're going to create a game handler uh, and attach it to the canvas object. Uh, you can make a, an empty game object and put it in there but I typically just put it with the canvas for the moment especially with a small scene like this. Um, we're going to import the UI system uh, using unity engine .ui. Uh, we're going to add two variables. We can have uh, public uh, text as we are coin text uh, and we're going to have a public int coins. Now in our update function we want to do coin text dot text equals coins uh, add a little space afterwards just so that the spacing between the number and the uh, code on there and coins and then just this simple line here we can get rid of this start function um, so all this script will do is when the coin value is changed which we can by default set this to zero uh, when the coin value is changed it will update on here which will update the, the text which we have here um, but before you hit play uh, we need to just make sure that our game handler actually knows which text element to change so we'll drag on this we can rename this as well actually coin text just so it's easier to remember later on if you've got more elements on your screen uh, and now if we go to our coin script we can now reference this public game handler gh gh um, equals game object dot find canvas we're going to get the canvas object uh, and then get components. We're going to get the game handler uh, and then close that off. Um, this isn't the most efficient way to, most efficient thing to do. Uh, using gameobject.find, especially on a big scene, is really inefficient. But if you're if you're working on a small project, this is this is perfectly fine. Uh, but if you start running into performance issues later on, then this might be something you want to look into finding another way to make sure that the coins know about the game handler. Um, or if you're not going to do a coin count, it doesn't matter. If you just want to literally play a sound, then don't worry about this part. Uh, so what we're then going to do is do gh.coins++. Plus plus. And what that will do, will add one to the coin amount. So if we do coins, uh, there we go, we already picked up one because I landed on it. Uh, two, three, four, five. Awesome. So we're picking up five coins. But nothing's happening. Uh, no sound, no nothing. So let's fix that. So what we're going to do is when we go on to the on trigger enter, we're going to create, um, we're going to actually add to our coin script a uh, public audio uh, audio clip, and we're going to call this coin sound. And then on trigger enter, we're going to do a very simple piece of code: audio source dot uh, play clip. Ooh, dot, play clip at point and then we want the audio clip so coin sound and then we want to do transform dot oh, uh, transform dot position so what this will do it will play a sound at the coin's position it basically creates a temporary audio source just to play the clip and then it gets rid of it again just because if we try to uh, add an audio source to the coin to play a sound um, because we're going to be destroying the object, the sound wouldn't even get a chance to play because the object would be destroyed before the sound played. 
Using play clip at point, it creates a audio source that is separate to the object. Um, just it, it basically is it really works well for this um, this method. So what we can do now is go back out here, uh, go to our resources, go to coin. I see game handler isn't set, but it will find this. Uh, I've got a couple uh, coin scripts actually, uh, coin sound effects. So I go back to coin, click the little circle here. Uh, and I've got coin one, we'll start with that one for now. Hit save, um, and I'll hit play there. There we go, I, I just about heard that. Very quiet. Um, let's try the other one there, maybe that's a bit louder. Hit play, uh, let's see what happens, play. Oh, yep, uh, that one's definitely a bit louder. You might be able to hear it on the video though. Okay, uh, so you may have this little uh, warning down here that's two audio listeners. That's because I didn't delete the other main camera. So if we hit play now, there we go. Should be much louder. Perfect. If it's too loud, you can adjust the volume. I've added a little one here, which is actually the volume amount. We can set this to about half of that if we want to. Uh, hit play. Oh, there we go. Oh, actually, I picked up all the coins. So let's uh, hit play again. There you go. It's a little bit quieter now. There we are, perfect. So, um, we've now got simple pickup sound when we collect some of the coins. We've got some UI on the screen, um, and the coins get deleted. Now the other thing we can actually do, um, just very simply, is add another audio source to our canvas here. I'm actually gonna add some background music here. Uh, I'm gonna add a loop, play on awake. I'm gonna set the volumes to probably about 0.4. Um, if I hit play now, there's some sound in the background. Awesome. So there's some music in the background of your game as well. That's a little extra thing there. Um, with regards to this coins thing not sitting in the top left of the screen correctly, uh, if you go to your canvas element and use scale with screen size, I've actually created uh, my own resolution things down here. So if let's just say we're going to go with, no, actually let's go with 1080p. Um, if we go to coin text, um, put it in our top left there, and then grab the center of this, put it in the top left, and hopefully every time we change aspect, it should actually then sit in that top left almost perfectly. So there we go. That's a simple fix for that as well. Uh, I hope I covered everything that you wanted in this tutorial. Uh, if anyone has any issues, leave a comment below. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Uh, and yeah, uh, let me know what you want to see next time. It's good to be back trying to make these tutorials. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.